Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, heard Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on PSA.com and the PSA Facebook page. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by PSA and the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now, your hosts... Tom Zappala and Rico Petroselli. What are you doing? Well, seriously, what are you doing? What do you call those things when you do that? You Notes. Know, make, no, these little uh, two hickeys. Yeah, things. you're just drawing. What, no, but there's another name for it. Uh, fiddling. Co- toddling, tootling fiddling. or something? Whatever. Yeah. Welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. Tom Zapp, my partner in crime. Yeah. Red Sox Hall of Famer Rico Petroselli. We Thank have a great you. show today. Our guest drove all the way from Springfield, John DeMaris, and we're going to talk to John in about two seconds because the New England Card Show is coming up this weekend. And guess what the headline is? The New England Card Show is coming up this weekend. Uh, if you're in New England, we, uh, this is going to be, uh, this is eventually going to wind up hands down big, the biggest big. card show in New England, number one, but uh, it's going to be a great time this weekend. Uh, my good partner here, uh, Red Sox Hall of Famer Rico Petroselli and Jimmy Lomborg will be signing there. But yeah. by the way, John, there was a nice little article in Sports Collectors Daily. Introduce yeah, it was, him. Right? It was great. Rich, it was great. Rich called you? Did a great job. He called out, uh, gave us some information, and he put a great article out there for us. and really appreciate it. I, well, you know something that was great? I emailed him, and I says, hey, what do you think? He said, give me the info, and it was great. He's, yeah. he's a good man. So That's if you great. want to hear about or read about the entire show, go to sportscollectorsdaily.com, our good friend, Rich Miller. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the show with your friends. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. Uh, if you have a comment, uh, you know, Type in a little comment to us. If you want to email me, you can email me at zapsenior, Z-A-P-S-R, at hotmail.com. How come you never email me? I don't have an email, that's why. Is that why? Yeah, still, no, using, no. still using carrier pigeon? No, I, uh, I, I prefer the messaging, you know, the little messaging thing. It's, it's really nice. <laughs> you don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> All right, let's bring in... Before we, uh, and John, you can just jump in here. Yeah. You know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we had uh, Derek was supposed to be on the show with us, and he blew us off at the last minute. I'm at the doctor's, my stomach hurts, which was fine. Yeah, that's so a- then we brought in, we were supposed to bring in Mike Provenzal. Yep. And you know Mike. Sure, I know him. Mike, I, at five minutes of, I called, I said, Mike, where the hell are you? He says, what are you talking about? I'm at the doctor's office with my daughter. I says, you're oh. supposed to be on the show. Yeah. That's too bad. Gone. Man. He forgot. Yeah. But things like He's that. He's heritage. Heritage people, man. So then we went to the pinch hitter for the pinch hitter. What was his name, Derek? Chris Neerant. He was fabulous. Fabulous. See, See that? Chris came, Chris came on. Chris was a marketing guy, communications yeah. guy. At the last minute, he came on. It was like he didn't. We didn't miss a beat. Oh, wow. He was. He well, was. I mean, uh, I would argue so, that. What do you? Yeah. I'm. I'm a few levels higher, but you know, he, he can still do a <laughs> I, job. I, I was going to say, what do you mean by that? <laughs> All right, listen. All right, John. Right out of the gate. Right out oh. of the gate to twelve point nine million dollar. Twelve point six million dollar. Twelve point six. Twelve point six. Rico corrected you. I know he that's did. That's amazing. That's, that's that is amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I um, my stuff. What has that sale done to mantle cards in the hobby, Derek? It's. I think everybody has a percentage of their mantle sales. Mantle cards have now even in ones, twos, they're everything setting records. Dealers are pricing them higher. They're selling. You're seeing it across the board in every grade. Really, Only so many people can buy a nine or a nine and a half. Even an eight is two million bucks, you know. But those cards and ones and twos and threes. By the way, centering is everything on the fifty-two mantle. If it's centered, a two can outsell outsell a four. Centering well, can, is can what everybody something? wants. Two weeks ago, I think you you were on when I was on. You know, now he's has he's, he has me every two weeks. <laughs> so I asked you that question. Not that I'm proud of it because I know my stuff. You know, but at the time he didn't know. No. Yes, he did. He said, 
Probably will. I said, right, right. Derek, uh, you think that'll help the other car? You made the prediction. And you made it. Yeah. You made it because uh, it's. Uh, you would think. I mean, you know, it's obvious that uh, everything yeah. would go up. So you know, anyway. Derek, you just made a comment, though, that I want to I follow up on. You know, collectors really need to understand that when they're looking at a graded card, if it's, a, if it's, a, if it's, a, if it's a, got a grade of three, but visually it's, it's, it's much more attractive and better looking than a four or a five, mm-hmm. that three is actually more valuable than the four or five, Correct. It can be. I mean, there's people that look at um, price points and say, if this is selling, if it's a five, that's really off center. Um, but they look at it as it's selling underpriced for a five. There's a reason it's selling like that for a five. You have to be able to, I think collectors have to do a better job. I think Joe and I discussed this. They're, they are doing a better job with eye appeal. If an item, they don't care what it's going for in a five. If it's an ugly five, meaning it qualifies for a five, but there's something you don't like about how it qualifies. So it's usually going to be a really off-center five. Right. That doesn't look as good as a three that's centered. So people will get say, that little crease doesn't bother me, or those four rounded corners don't bother me because the card's dead centered, whereas the five could be super sharp, but it's going to be the whole way off the card. And so when you see those discounts, some people still buy by the, hey, I'm getting a great deal on this, so I'm going to buy it by the grade more and more people are buying it by the eye appeal and reselling same thing. And I've seen that more than ever now on dealers tables. I don't care if it's a Seaver rookie, a Ryan rookie, a 56 mantle, doesn't matter what it is. Right. Centered cards bring premiums. No, I think that that's important for, for yeah. collectors. That, that that's one of the most important things now, especially because the way the, way uh, the card and, looks. And yeah. they're starting yeah. to appreciate. Yeah. We can go buy a pack of 56 tops cards. If we could find one, and spend ten grand on it, and open up an, a nickel pack if they had nickel packs. I'm guessing I'm not an app pack expert, and pull out five cards, and every single one of them might be a five. Right. Just because you open a pack from the fifties doesn't mean you're going to get eights and nines. Mm. You can easily get them right out of the right out of the pack with hit corners, centering issues, factory wrinkles. They don't always come out like they do today. Listen, all nines and tens. I, I, I want. I've got to mention your your most recent auction. Um, it was a good auction. Well, it was a great auction for smaller companies, to be honest with you. We've always been very frank with each other. You mean the current one right I now? I mean the current the one, one, the one that's going on. I mean, it doesn't seem... It this Thursday? Yeah. yeah. T- 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 it's, so it, it's not... I mean, it's, it's you know, it's there, but uh, it's not... Uh, I mean, you have a million-dollar-plus Brady card in it. You have the 41 Playball Williams in a nine. There's lots of significant cards in there, but for a heritage, you know, for us... We, we keep raising the bar on ourselves. We just did a $39.6 million auction. That's one of the biggest the hobby's ever seen. We set world records all across the platforms. So now, this is kind of a tweener. This is kind of a tweener it's, auction. No, it's not even a tweener. This was a created auction because of the duplication. November is going to be massive. Okay, okay. Okay, so our November sale is going to be massive. Our, this is just a card and ticket only auction. There's no memorabilia. Right. And this was duplication and other great stuff. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, this is a auction that smaller companies than us would be thrilled to have as absolutely of one of their best catalogs. But for us, after you do a thirty-nine million dollar auction, what what the hell am I going to do? I have to follow that up now with a forty million dollar auction. I mean, those are you don't get. You know, how about the fifty-two mantle and a nine-five? Um, I may live the rest of my life, or in this career, that's the highlight of my career. I don't know that that will ever be broken. Good point. Hey, before we let you go, um, we're really excited about this coming weekend. The New Eng- That's why John's here, the New England Card Show uh, at the uh, Mass Mutual Center in Springfield, right near the Springfield Hall of Fame. I, I know you're not going to be there this time around, but you guys mm-hmm. really should have a presence down there. I know you're at the Philly show this past weekend. Sure. Yeah, and, and we do the Boston Shriner yeah. show, yeah. and we do Outstanding, and we do the other, the you know, the Altman show. I don't think they changed the name of it. The right. Altman Boston show. So we have a great, you know, group of collectors in that area. I'll actually be up there soon in an undisclosed location, picking up a significant consignment. Um, now, don't get excited. Like I have time for dinner. Or time if if you do, you're buying because okay. I'm sick of paying. You know, how many times have we even gone to dinner? Twice. Okay. 
So either either way, you know, we we have trips up there all the time. So I will look into that show. I believe I just met John. this guy right here at the John. at the show at the Philly show. You yep. handed me a business card. I did when I was yeah. I was talking. I was in the middle of a conversation uh, with Hunt Auctions. I'm, we're friends, as we talked about. We're all friends in the hobby. So I was having a conversation with Hunt when I got away from my booth, and I met John, and he he gave me his card. So we will look into doing that if it's. You know, look, I'm rooting. I want look, there to be other good shows. Well, your buddy's going to be I, there. Kenny I, Golden's going to be there. So, can I say? Uh -oh. Well, yeah. No, this is two hours from Boston, and <clears throat> it's a. I think it's a different group. I, it's I agree tremendous with that. Tremendous potential well, I think there. He's gonna pull. You, got, you got Hartford. Right. You got exactly. That whole areas. You're going to pull. You're going to pull. Not, like you're so an I, hour, it's, John. It's what are you? An hour show. and ten minutes from New York. From all. How far are you from Albany? Hour yeah, and a half. Right. That's, that's Springfield another. is a crossroads of New England. Yeah. And it captures Westchester County all the way up to Maine. No, I mean, I yeah. think. Look, we need. We always talk about the same shows over and over again. The Philly show, the Chicago shows, God. the the White Plains shows, the Boston shows. We need other quality promoters not one of these things where people come in and they say oh my god baseball cards are great let's open a grading company i can make money let's open a store i can right, make money let's right, promote right. a show i can make money there's always people that come in to do that and then they shut down after a little bit yeah. i'm hoping john's gonna i mean i met him for the first time i'm hoping he's gonna do this the right way build it up not give up on it and it's only gonna get better over time if he keeps yeah. the marketing the advertising and the dealer's word of mouth and this could be yeah. One of the you know one of the best shows. That's a great collecting community up in that area. Yeah. All right, brother. So, your website address hey. is uh, www.ha.com. Go to sports. Listen, when the November auction comes up, you know, give me some pointers. I I need. I want to spend a few bucks. Yeah. He, you just got to you got to pay more than somebody else. I and was going to say so, that, he that, wants that, a discount. Is that how sure. you do it? Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Good. We know. All right, brother. We love you. Take care. Take care. Say hi to Joe. See you. Take care. About Derek, Derek's a good man. He's a oh, he's man. great. Really yeah. good guy. He really is. All right. We have a lot to talk about today. Uh, for our viewers, especially the locals, the Boston people, uh, uh, western part of the state, Connecticut, uh, we have a big following uh, there. Uh, I, I'm really excited about this show, uh, this show John, because, uh, you know, you and I bumped into each other at a small little car shop up here in Newburyport, Mass., mm -hmm. and we started chatting, and tw quite frankly... I've been approached by a lot of people over the years, same, you know. But then when you started talking about what, you would, what you've done in the past and what the show was, was looking like, I said, wow, this, this could be something, something really, really nice. So um, first of all, give us a little overview of Primetime and John DeMars. Sure. Um, Primetime started about two years ago, uh, coming out of COVID, and we saw that uh, the card market was just booming and we started doing some research first in the Connecticut area and we determined hey there's there's a small niche of shows but we have an opportunity to bring a show together and we started off with our first show about two years ago outside of Hartford in New Britain Connecticut and we called it the primetime card show and it grew to be the largest show now in Connecticut 65 tables per month and it grew pretty quickly so it is a monthly show a monthly show we just came off a show last Sunday this past Sunday and it was a, a Huge show. It's unbelievable. People coming from Massachusetts now oh, that we've good. met through right. the Springfield uh, New England card show. Um, so that actually started our thought process. And the vendors there are saying that we needed a larger type of regional show in the southern New England area. And like you saw me in Wilburn, uh, we've hit every show. So we do research on every show from the smaller shows to the medium-sized shows to the larger shows to the Philly show to, you know, Chantilly. We did the Shriners, the Rich Altman show. We did every show in the area and looked at what can we do in our space to be a regional type of destination show. And we took that, and the next step was to find a location that was viable to create a show that we think could be carrying a larger demographic and a larger space in, in New England, and we landed on Springfield. And everyone's saying, why didn't anyone else do Springfield? Springfield is an iconic, iconic city. Right, it has a major uh, venue uh, at that level of exhibition hall at a national type level. 
Well, it's got the Basketball Hall of Fame. Basketball Hall of Fame. It has the brand new MGM Casino. The casino is like supposed to be phenomenal. And then the fourth thing that people don't get, it, and it's why it's going to bring it to the next level, it has an international airport. Bradley International Airport is right on the Springfield-Hartford line there in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, which is 15 minutes from Springfield. So if you put those four elements together, wow. you have a foundation for a destination show. Yeah. And then on top of it, you got MGM and the Hall of Fame backing the New England Card Show. And together, we've created a pretty pretty nice show in a short period of time that's been growing. What, um, so, uh, we jump in anytime uh, you, know, you want. Well, the Connecticut, the Connecticut event. Tell us about the Connecticut event. He just event. did. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm glad yep. he did. But I'm going to ask him, walk us through the weekend. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's not going to be just the one day. It's going to be a weekend event. Yeah, I think think what you're going to see in the New England Card Show is a blend of new and old, right? We've created a kind of um, an atmosphere uh, and a vibe that brings in the old and new collector and the old and new vendors are coming together in a really nice venue. So it's going to start off on Saturday from 9 to 4, which will have 300 vendors on site. And a really unique concept that we brought in as well, that Pokemon is a huge, a huge thing now. In the collecting well, we're, we're experts in that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not an expert at all <laughs> no, on it. But uh, we, what we do is what we've done is we've taken surveys at every one of our shows and tried to get feedback from, from different um, collect- collectors. And you know that the Pokemon collector is a crossover collector to baseball. Sure. They're, cl- they're crossing over. They're looking for value. So we've created a Pokemon tournament. We call it the New England Pokemon Championship. And we're going to be having a live tournament during the show. We have a, Saturday, cool. a Saturday free play to get everybody there playing. And then the top 48 come back on Sunday for all the marbles. All the entry fees go back to the players. And we're going to have a 48-player tournament going on nice. while Rico's at the other side of the room signing autographs Very for cool. all the Red Sox fans. So it's a different vibe. So we, nice. we bring in a collective space. On top of that, we've created what we call primetime Saturday night, which is unique to the industry, having a trade night and hobby talk from a really iconic venue, Hall of Fame, that we invite everybody there between 6 and 11 with events all night long. It's, it's now, like a happy hour. Is that a paid event? Free event. Okay, it's a this free, is, it's a free event. So that, the Hall of be, Basketball Hall of Fame. Basketball Hall of Fame. Can they also? Uh, well, they'd have, probably have to pay to take a to tour. do a tour of the yep. tour. But yep. okay, that's different. Yep. But they that's ha- great. And I mean, but they have they have the New England Card Show discount if they want to come during the day. Okay. And they can leave the card show and, and go there during the day yeah, and they get yeah. a discounted pass great. by just mentioning the New England Card Show. They get a family package pass. Wow. Uh, See, that, I mean that's huge, especially that's for nice. the. I mean, I've been to the Basketball Hall of Fame uh, several times, and you know, th- just that in itself. It's a hell of a take. Mm-hmm. You're Absolutely. going to a card show, and guess what? Like, you know, when we're at the National. You're at the National all day, right? I mean, so will, can, can a person attend the card show, New England card show, spend three hours there, say, hey, let's take a break, let's, we'll pay, mm-hmm. go to the National uh, Basketball Hall of Fame, and then go back in? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. For that day, yeah. It, 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 oh. It's an event. That's and, huge. And in, if you've been to the actual Hall of Fame, there's... Lovely restaurants, all in the same complex. So you can have the nicest restaurants in Springfield just steps away from the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So it, it is a destination show. Uh, it has a combination of steps away from a beautiful brand new casino, <laughs> the state-of-the-art Hall of Fame, and then we're in the iconic Mass Mutual Center, which a lot of great games have been played there yeah. over the days back in Calipari and Mass Mutual mm. uh, Center and the new Mass, when they had made that big run in the 90s, he played a lot of games there. And it's oh, yeah. just a great facility. Um, I think the, the, the crowds are getting bigger and bigger. And just, just the word of mouth, um, just in the last three days, my phone has been blowing up with large, large presence on the Instagram page, um, sending out shout-outs on the New England Card Show. People that I even don't even know that have large podcasts are coming to do li- uh, live vlogs on the theater stage. So we're going to have access to the Hall of Fame Theater for Hobby Talk, which nice. we're going to have 200 invited guests to be there to watch the show and see the top vloggers from across the country on stage. They're followed up by having a free trade night. Both events are free at the Hall of Fame. A free trade night that you can bring your family and friends to the center court of the Hall of Fame and continue your trading, meeting the top vendors that are going to be set up there. We have four featured vendors set up 
at trade night to continue the vibe of a, of a mini car show within a car show. And we'll have some major sporting events on the big screen TV. Fantastic. Can, can uh, collectors go to your website to get all yep. this information? Yep. yep. Okay. Anycardshow.com. Anycardshow.com. You go there. It has all the information, times, schedule, Rico's appearance. It's all there. Check it out. Check out Rico and, and Jim Longboard. Sunday from 11 to 2 as well. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We come back, we're going to chat a little more with John. We have uh, On Deck with Rico, my favorite thing, my favorite thing, On Deck with Rico coming up. But I want to get into the mix of vendors that you're going to have and what the future holds. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Nobody knows. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high. Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, Because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. Your favorite Red Sox is mine. On deck with Nurse Pesticelli. All right, it is time for On Deck with Red Sox Hall of Famer Rico Petricelli. Brought to us each week by our good friend Brian Dwyer and yep. the great staff at REA Auctions. Don't forget, Rico, to get your bid in yeah. by going to robertedwardauctions.com. Right. That's Robert Edward Auctions for extraordinary results and extraordinary service. Yes, he does. This week's question, and by the way, you get our Gax t-shirt. Gax? Great American collectible Oh, oh, oh. Well, I... It's the first time I heard you say I that. I know. Gats. I never say that. I, like I, I, who knows? All right, this question is, was submitted by a gentleman, Jack 
Roy. Jack Roy. Rico, this is an easy one. Your thoughts on Aaron Judge, and where do you rate him as a player compared to some of the other Yankee greats? Here we go. I want to hear this. Every time a a Yankee player has a big, big year, oh, how do you compare him to Mantle and Ruth and Garrick? And come on. The kid is a – I love him, by the way. Sorry, Red Sox fans. I don't root for the Yankees. By the way, we do have a Yankee fan here I know amongst we us. But uh, <laughs> I, th- I really like him. He's having a great year. But I, unless he does it, not Cost- every year, obviously, but if he can t- continue through his, uh, his 30s uh, and, and really produce up to late, almost to 40 years old, big numbers, not 60, but – you know, 40 home run, 3,500 RBI. Then, then you can put him in that then, conversation. Then, it, then we can start talking about him being one of the, one of the best. I mean, so, so I mean, right. Jeter, Jeter wasn't a home run hitter, but he, 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 he was great 20 years, 20, however long he was there. So this kid's on the right track. He's got the potential not quite there yet. Right, but this kid is great. The Yankees don't tr- uh, sign him there. May I say it? Sorry, John. Stupid. No, what about the Red Sox? The Red Sox. Nah, he's one. not going to. Rico, let me, Red, I mean, where, I should, where? Where? Let me ask you a question, Sox Rico. Go ahead. He's sitting on sixty right now. Yeah. We got about ten games left. As a baseball player, with all the coverage he's been getting, what's going through his head? To Tremendous get through the pressure. What, how do you think he's ma- managing that? I know. I know. Roger had he that lost, pressure. Roger too. Maris lost, he lost his hair. hair. Yeah. Lost his hair. Yeah. You know. What What do you think he's going through here? You know, <laughs> I if have he pressure. lands on sixty. Yeah. Wow, what a story. But if he can get through this, what do you think he's going through right now? I, just my guess is that uh, there's a lot of pressure on him. Now, the pitchers, are, believe me, when he comes up there, they're, they're getting a little extra. Uh, and uh, I see he's striking out a little bit more, but uh, he, sh- he sh- could and should be able to do it. He's got time. But, but th- doesn't there come to a point, and I'm going to use you as an example, and all kidding aside, well, when, when you t- had your Ofa streak, okay, uh, Ofa 32, <laughs> when, just, I nice. have to bring that up periodically, nice, but don't you, doesn't it come to a point where you say, you know something, the hell with this crap, and then all of a sudden, the pressure kind of yeah. goes away? But I'll tell you what, <clears throat> not, not so much that, but remember, I was fortunate to hit 40 home runs, right, going for a record, uh, the highest in the American League at that time was 39. And the last couple of weeks, I felt it. I you did. Just, you know, we weren't even in the pennant race, really. And, man, every at bat, jeez. Was it more man. mental or was it more your swing changed? No, it was, or? Men- it was mental. It was, it's just that you're, you know, you're anxious. Uh, there's a little more. E- it's like anything you do, you do. You have to relax. That's why Hank Aaron, those guys are great. They come up. So when the you plate, hit your fight, boom! When you hit your fight, it was it like you just made, happened to make contact, or were you ready? No, I was ready. I, I got a, a hanging slider um, from Schellenbeck. He was a left-hander, and uh, it was in Washington RFK Stadium. And um, so <clears throat> you know, I hit it, and it's, it's great. Wow, you know, it was a big thrill. Uh, but I remember, I remember the actually the pressure, you know, to get there because the press, I even the press that. was on, you know, the press was following me, uh, <clears throat> and um, yeah, I couldn't yeah. even imagine that. When this kid, you know, and the, uh, being in the Yankees, Yankee Stadium, it's a great thing. You say, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. But sure, he wants it. I mean, why I, wouldn't he want to, to break the record? I want to throw something but, out. But he's a he's a great kid. I want to throw something out, uh, also out to you. Regarding Albert Pujols, yeah, hit 700. You know, Great. have you ever taken a hard look at Albert Pujols' numbers over his career? Yeah, of course. Let me tell you something. He's in the conversation as the greatest first baseman of all time. I'm telling you, if you look at his numbers, take a hard look at his numbers, yeah. he is certainly in the conversation. I mean, with all due respect, and I'm a Lou Gehrig guy, I love Lou Gehrig, but if you take a real hard look at Albert Pujols' numbers... Now, I'm assuming that, you know, he was 100% clean his yeah. career. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. I, you know, I, I'm, ass- I'm assuming that. His numbers have to be considered, Rico. How good was Albert oh, Pujols? Great, great, great. His whole career. Uh, you know, when he went to Anaheim and he's, uh, you know, he's getting older. Yeah. Uh, you know, being in St. Louis, going back to where he started, probably got him pumped up. 
I don't think he's taken anything. I know he's a man of strong faith, family man, yeah. and all that stuff. So I, I just don't think he would do it. No, he's a legitimate, just all time great. When you talk about yeah. all time, I, I, I agree with that. I think yeah, right? if you take his longevity and yeah, his consistency, absolutely. and you put those two together, I, I agree against any yeah, other first guess, baseman. Yeah, who else are you thinking? Who comes to mind besides a first baseman? There's By the not way, many. can I say something, folks? We got a Yankee fan here, John. We forgive him. But look at this front runner. Not front runner. He's got the B. He's like, like he's really. Uh, hold on. You know, I, Red Sox had a tough hold year. Hold on. But, you know why I'm, I'm wearing loyal. this? You know, I'm loyal. No, I'm wearing this for one reason. Why? Because yesterday they officially clinched last place. <laughs> oh, so geez. I am wearing you feel this. sorry for them? I am wearing this in honor of my hometown team, which is your hometown team. Yeah, no, of course. We, we're disappointed, but uh, be all right. it's going to be uh, interesting to see. And, they, and the Yankees, too, by the way, with uh, with Judge. Will they sign him? Are they going to sign Bogats? I don't know. I don't know. I think, should they? Of course. I hope they, they do. they got to have some players. I hope they you do. You know, people want they want to watch uh, the, the the team on Nesson. They want to watch uh, yeah. go to the ballpark. If you have uh, stinkies, you know, uh, people's going to stop going after a while. John, let's uh, let's go back to the show. First of all, are you a collector yourself? Uh, I was a collector as a kid, and then I got into my adulthood. And now I got revisited with my son. So my son's a big collector. Is he really? He's a big time. He's a big time collector. Loves the NFL. Loves baseball. Um, kind of f- funny. His sp- his uh, favorite teams are totally different than the dad. So that's the new generation. You don't follow your dad's team. He's a Mets fan, and he's loving his run right now. Right. Um, and uh, hopefully they do well. It'd be great to see the Mets and the Yankees in a, another. A World Series together. Uh, we saw that back in 2000. But um, from a standpoint of the hobby, I love where I'm at as a promoter because the way that you get to touch everybody in the hobby. Yeah. You can get relationships with gentlemen like you. You can meet every vendor in the area. You can meet collectors that call you up all the time. When's your next show? They become your family. I yeah. mean, that's what's happened to us. Over the, I mean, over the six, seven years that we've been on the air, yeah. we have established some, some really great relationships with uh, people in this hobby, and I'm not just talking about dealers, I'm talking about dealers, talking about fans, collectors. Uh, collectors. I mean, we meet some of the greatest people at the National that uh, follow the show, we love chatting with them. Rico's great with them, never says no, right? I mean, that, well, that's what it's all about. Well, it's a great hobby. It's uh, if I, My son, Mike's sons, are, of course, they're all growing up, but if I, was, I had little kids... Uh, you know, once they get to know and be able to read, you know, the eight, ten years or whatever it is, I, I would love to have them be, you know, uh, be in this hobby. For, would I rather do that and have them uh, standing on the corner? Absolutely, you know what I mean? agree with right. you. Or getting in trouble, and you know, with so much right. going on, this is great. And and they get excited, looking forward to. You know the show with Dad. We're going with Dad. No, I, I agree, man. I, I so think, I mean, I, I, uh, well, the day great. I met you in Newburyport. You know, I had never. This is Vic Andrioli's show. Mm-hmm. The last time I was at that show was probably five years ago. And you were and, walking in with your grandson. And I was doing a book signing with Ellen five years ago when he was in the other location. Yeah. My grandson called me that Sunday morning and said, "Hey, can you take me to a to that card show in New Report?" Well, Went to Dunkin' Donuts. Great. Picked him up. Yeah. It, he's just learning. He's into football cards. Mm-hmm. And we, we were there an hour. And then I bumped into John. So yeah. everything is fake, John. Uh, everything uh, is fake, you know. And we uh, had a blast. He bought a couple of cards and we went home. Yeah. Yeah. John, I want to talk about your mix. Uh, your mix of vendors at the show. I mean, and I know really you're, you're just on the cusp of this show really expanding. Mm-hmm. And you and I talked about it. Uh, the mix is really important, in my opinion. You know, you've, you've got to have your vintage card dealers. Yep. You've got to have your modern card dealers. You've got to have your auction houses. You've got to have your vintage break companies to do breaks because people love that stuff. And then there's a lot of stuff in between. Are you yep. cognizant of that? And, to, you know, well, what's your direction? Much, very, very much so. I think in this industry, how it's kind of blew up recently you have a lot of new modern vendors that are trying to enter the space. So they're trying to get table space. What I've learned is that through connections, you're gonna find who the real niche, modern and vintage vendors are, and they're all being referred to me. So if I looked at my makeup, and I met Joe, I went to the Philly show this weekend, 
Joe Unbe- Drellick. Joe Drellick, unbelievable gentleman. Uh, his wife's guy. amazing. He's, he is a great guy. Um, and he was spent some time with me and really kind of walked through the but whole show and dynamic. That, that's what Derek is talking about. Yeah. He, here's a guy that is is a friendly competitor, but you guys, he's like helping you, kind of yeah. giving you yeah. pointers and information. Yeah, and it's right. great. His, his wife two, is there as well too. Two different areas yeah. of the country too. I mean, you know what that. And if I unless you want to see the industry, if I was going to compare the the percentages when I walk through a Philly show very well established right I would say they're heavier than I am from that vintage person no doubt he has access he just has the yeah. the, the grassroots what I've noticed is is the vintage uh, um, vendor wants to wait to see how successful you're going to be so mm-hmm. they're not going to jump on there and get there until they see the momentum growing with that said I would say I've got about 35%, 30 to 35% vintage. Oh, that's okay. good. That's a good mix. I, I, would, I would say I got about 50 plus percent of, of modern, modern, and of modern. modern. And then the other 20% in that kind little of space. Both. A little bit of both. Some, some um, Pokemon and some of the newer type things. Yep. And there's a lot of the uh, collective products too that they're selling now, the bottlehead dolls and everything else that comes along with the merchandise. Yeah. So yeah. steadily we're growing that just in the last probably two shows, I probably increased from 25% to 35% in the vintage market. So there's this kind of balance, right? That my show is probably trending to more of a, a, a newer type of feel to it. And once you guys come in this weekend, I think you're going to see it. Uh, it's laid out. Uh, the One of the big you know, compliments I get on our show is the way it's laid out, the floor plan and the way it flows. And the Mass Mutual Center, it's going to be a surprise to you. It's a really nice venue, has multiple concession stands in, in the actual venue, and it's just laid out and it flows perfectly. And uh, Rico's going to have its own personal table and with his own personal room behind him. If, if, oh, if he has to take a break, he can go to the if, back like, room and if, take a break. If Ellen Dave, and I, my own personal <laughs> If Ellen and I say hi to you, you, like, oh, no. will you wave I don't to don't us? know you. We have to show. I, <laughs> who? Tom, who? Um, what about auction houses? I know right. th- I know that that takes a little bit to, to start right. establishing. Right. Are you making any headway at all? Yep, I think... Oh. And you can mention them. I'll, I'll mention them. I'll, I'll, first of all, I got to give Golden a shout because Golden's, Absolutely. Golden's been with me since day one. Heritage, so, see Heritage. So, listen to that. Kenny's there. Here's the only reason why. I'll tell you why Golden was first to the party was that there is there's a small card show in Enfield, Connecticut. Okay, that uh, a gentleman from Western Mass works for um, Golden. His name is Ryan. Okay, and I was on his case since day one. And just to give you the growth of the show, and he says, well, I don't want to do your New Britain show. It's too small for an auction house. If you do something bigger, I'll do it. Once I was able to establish the first show in Springfield, which started off at 150 tables in the smaller section of the exhibit hall we're going to be in, yep. he said, I'll do your show with you. And he's been there for every show since, and he's grown. And I told you this story the last show in June, which the summer months were kind of slow in the, in the sure, show market. Sure. We actually had a really good show. And that was another buzz that came out on all the vloggers saying, hey, this show is a really good show for summertime. In the first 15 minutes of the show, he had a $300,000 consignment walk yeah, through see, the door. That's, that's cool. And he was saying, hey, I, I met my quota for the day. And he was walking around really happy. What Derek in the group, um, Al, um, fortunate. Thanks for the introduction there. Al, Al um, Chris Foley, love uh, of the game. Love of the game. He's going to be going, not this week, but ne- at, at next, the, next, next show. year he has oh, good. four dates set up. Tom from Emory Lane is in the loop as well. So the goal is to get, you know, Heritage there, hopefully too. Get Derek in the group there. Uh, in the group, get them in there to see how powerful that market is. Now, Brian Dwyer, yeah, if you're yeah. listening or, or, or viewing us, REA Auctions is not too far from there. They're in New York. Yep. And uh, uh, New York and New Jersey. That's, a, you know, New for Jersey. the East Coast auction houses, it's a pretty good venue. It's like close to, to most of them, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. So that's important. That's for sure. Uh, Mike, uh, I'm thinking about this for not just yourself, but for the whole industry. With the economy... You know, up and down. It looks like it's going to be doing. It's any concern about you know the things. In other words, what's your feeling on it? You're just I, going to go I, forward. I, and, I, here, hey, here's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, and, and when I learned a lot. A that's, a, that's a great I don't question. Don't say that. Uh, he always says that. Oh, you know, well, I've you heard say, some of your questions. I'm gonna, <laughs> that that was spot on right there. I'll tell you exactly what it is. I think See, everyone look, Everyone looks at the industry. It's a, it's a commodity. You yeah. know, yeah. memorabilia is a commodity. Cards are commodities, and the market right now is going up and down. 
based on the economy, right? Yep, yep. And and your your access to money, where you're going to spend your money, it's going to really drive how busy these shows are. Yeah. With that cool. said, I think Derek had the right thing, is that uh, if you're around long enough, you're going to see a lot of spikes in the market. If you continue to give a good product and a good venue, yeah. and you bring the best people together, both collectors and vendors, you're still going to be there. Now, can you measure how much is going to be spent at this show? Yeah. It's going to be driven by the economy, right? But like anything else in the economy, when something starts going in this direction, everyone's looking for deals or everyone's looking to get out of deals. So there's always going to be a market to trade and Good to point. buy and sell. Well, not so, only that, but the market is down. Let's face it. I mean, you know, uh, and uh, what do people want to put their money in? Well, well, they might take it out of that, might, or if they have, uh, you know, some money to... This is a great investment. Okay. You know, he's, we're gonna, I want to talk about that because you're hitting it right on the head. Well, thank you. That's because I mean, graduated. Uh, right, now, right now, there's some great buys out there. And I'll tell you what, and we've talked about this a zillion yeah. times. I have gotten a, one, a hell of a better return on my collection, my personal collection, than I have with investments and 401ks oh, and all of that absolutely. over the last 25 years. Look what's years. happening. I mean, come on. To, to gonna, that, let's take that. a break. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. We have another segment. We're going to finish up with John. Uh, and I want to talk about this a little more because it is a hell of an investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when we get to Petroselli's memorabilia in his cellar. No, no. No, 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 no. I, I want to look at that. Nah, I don't, uh, don't we'll, touch it. We'll be right back. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona, totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on-site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you're a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on their tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection, to the famed Boston Garden auction, to high-end card auctions from every major sport, Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, courting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned, the highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. 
Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE. Or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. They are prized possessions, and you need a place to store them that is safe and secure. The eBay Vault is exactly that, an insured climate-controlled facility with state-of-the-art security that guards your valuable collection around the clock. Your Vault account is protected by two-step verification and easily accessible through eBay Collection. And everything stored in the eBay Vault is backed by Authenticity Guarantee. Buying and selling is a seamless experience. When you buy an eligible card on eBay, it can be sent directly to the eBay Vault at checkout. Or, if it's already in the eBay Vault, you can just keep it there. And selling from the eBay Vault is just as easy. Every card in the Vault has been expertly inspected, detailed, and photographed, so you can quickly sell it with a pre-populated listing. And if your buyer chooses to withdraw their card from the eBay Vault, we handle packing, shipping, and insurance. And same goes for you. If you want that rare rookie card in your hands, you can have it shipped to you at any time. Collect like a pro with the eBay Vault. I tell you, this is fabulous, folks. Uh, this eBay Vault is climate controlled, insured, and protected with 24 hour security. Actually, Tom is the guy, he's, he'll stay right by the vault for 24 <laughs> hours. Oh, got a day. it. Soon, you'll be able to send cards already in your collection directly to the eBay Vault. They'll take uh, high quality photos of the front and back of the card. And document all the details for your viewing pleasure and to make the listing to sell process seamless. Do it. Really, it's great. For more information, go to eBay, connecting buyers and sellers you know what, globally. I'm just thinking, you just gave me an idea. When you croak, yeah, right? Right. It might you, be soon, too. We can put you in a vault. <laughs> We could put you in a vault. Like Ted Williams? Yeah. Well, uh, or even fractional buying. Okay. Right? Do we well, know any surgeons? I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or meat cuts? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. All right. Before we get back to John, we were talking about our good friend Joe Drellick. Yes. CSA show, CSA Shows is proud to present the Chantilly Show being held on October 21st to 23rd at the Dulles Expo Center in Chantilly, Virginia. Just minutes from Dulles International Airport. Celebrating over 25 years at the same location, there'll be over 300 dealer tables exhibiting on over 100,000 square feet of space. With both vintage cards and memorabilia, as well as modern-day sports treasures, you won't have to look very far for that special card, bat, ball, or autograph. Major auction houses and third-party grading companies will be on site to assist you with your collecting and authentication needs. Some of your favorite superstars will be on hand, including football great Champ Bailey, former NBA superstar Dave Bing. I loved him. He was a good player. Good shooter. The bus, Jerome Bettis, Baseball Hall of Fame of Vlad Guerrero, and many, many more. For more information, go to the Chantilly Show, csashows.com, where you can find all of your sports collectibles treasures. Another thing, John, sports memorabilia. Very big. It's red hot. A couple of memorabilia dealers, not auction houses, but guys that sell memorabilia real, real, real hot. We have a few. We need to increase that for yeah. sure because that's a hot commodity right now. It takes from time. Both, it takes a little time, but uh, those are the type of unique vendors Absolutely. That, that come in once you're established. Yeah. And I'm thinking we're trending in that way, and hopefully new year, 
uh, new vendors yeah, are coming in. Yeah, a new mix. In. Yeah, a, new a, mix. A, a mix of everything. Modern, vintage, all of that stuff. What were we talking about before? I was talking about the investment opportunities and what, uh, what the investment is worth uh, with, the, with the economy. It's, it's like unbelievable. Um, John, what is your thought about vintage versus modern? I'm curious. It's, it's interesting right now that uh, there's one particular – I want to bring up a name. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. A young gentleman. It's called Breakout Cards. He would be a great guest for you guys. He's yeah. a younger individual, probably late 20s, early 30s. He has a very, very cool uh, vlog and uh, YouTube channel, and he'll be at our show on stage. Um, nice. And he is really strong into the vintage market. So he's like all in vintage. Oh, yeah, so we'd love to get look, him on. If you look at his collection, he can really answer the question. But yeah. here's, here's what the thought process is here in, in, the, in the industry. Vintage is something that you need to have experience, right? You need to know what you're buying. Absolutely. Right? And have but, money. But have money. But also, <laughs> but if you buy at the right point, uh, you have a really good investment that's going yep. to stay there. You're, you're not going to have any of these vintage guys that have passed away that's going to get in any trouble with, uh, with anything that's going Cobb on. Cobb is uh, dead. Right. Right. <laughs> So Ruth is dead. Manuel is dead. But, but what, what we're seeing here in the younger generation is, is once they learn more about, and they're calling them the goats. So I, I hear from the, from the younger group is that the young goats versus the old goats. The old goats are people that may, most likely have passed away or are older gentlemen. They're established goats, right? Sure. Their, their value is not going to change. Yep. And they're starting to see that. They're starting to see the value in that, right? And the other side of it is, why can't I locate the young goat before someone else locates them and then invest in them? We're talking about investing, the economy, up and down, like a commodity. If you're able to buy a young goat before it pops and that person really becomes a goat of his generation, now you have an asset that's going to go up tenfold, twentyfold, fiftyfold. And that's kind of where the market is now. It's like a commodity. You have to view these up-and-coming players like you view the vintage goats. Who's the next one? Who's but next? It, it, there's a, and I agree with you. Except there is there's a component here. And, you know, just recently, let's use, uh, obviously, we've t- talked about him in the past, Tatis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, $12 million were invested in Tatis cards. They're kind of not worth very much right now. Uh, Trey Lance recently. Now Mac Jones. If Mac Jones is out for a couple of months and, you know, he was just starting to develop. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he has a major setback. The Mac Jones cards, do they go down in value? Uh, there was somebody else. Uh, I can't even remember who else Zion. it was. Zion. Uh, Zion Williamson. Same right. thing. So you, I, I think it's, you're, you're absolutely right, but it's speculative. You've got to be careful. Right. I think that's well, the advice. You've got to be careful. You should be if you're going to, you know, invest any money in them. Uh, you should learn right from the beginning. Uh, you know, and you get involved in the in the industry. If you're gonna, you know, be yeah. a, what I say, a serious, you know, investor or serious collector, yeah, you, you should know something about so, the industry. But what about? I'm gonna ask both you guys this. So, what about the in betweeners, the tweeners? You've got you've got Ruth and Cobb and Garrick and and Jimmy Fox and all those guys. Great. Now you have the modern players, uh, uh, Tatis uh, in, in basketball, Moran, all of those guys. Mm-hmm. What about the guys like George Brett, the guys like uh, 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 Robin Yount, yeah. the guys like Carlton Fisk? Well, those those sure, those cards, yeah. those for, for what for some reason, those players are kind of like in between, right? Right. I agree. I mean, now, if I'm a collector, younger collector, I hold, I buy those cards. And I agree. I hold on them. That's what right. I see. I hold on them. That's uh, and then do they become? Right. Does Carlton Fisk Us, or Johnny or, Bench and Pete, or well, not Pete Rose, but uh, Joe Morgan, do those guys oh, at yeah. some point in time become the Roots, the Cobbs, uh, the Garricks? I don't know about that. I'm uh, not talking now. I'm talking 20 years from yeah, now. Yeah, okay. After they're I, gone. I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll check it out when I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> call, it, call us when you get that update for us. Give, yeah, us, yeah. give us a call. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, I, you understand my point? No, yeah. I, that's a great point. It's, you know? Uh, that's what... That's what I would do if I was, right. you know, if I was uh, older, you know, seriously, uh, you know, 60s and stuff, and I had some money, I, I would got a, go I got a, a really, little, I got a PSA 10, <laughs> listen to so me, the vintage. I got a PSA 10 Joe Foy you can have. Joe Foy, hey. PSA a 10. teammate of mine. That, yeah. That's a very meaningful for me. Three bucks. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, listen, we got about five minutes. Uh, your view of the hobby. 
going in the right direction? I think health-wise, coming out of COVID, you have this additional following that's established that we wouldn't have had pre-COVID. I think we picked up a lot of new collectors, a lot of old vendors that are now new vendors that are back in the industry. I think there's going to be a domino that we need to kind of track here with the economy coming up. And that's going to kind of see who's really serious, who's in or not. But I think the net net gain is that we've picked up a lot of new young collectors and a lot of new older collectors that are back into the game. Yeah. Now, going forward, I think it's going to be all based on how the economy plays out next year and how we have solid shows to continue to be built. And I think we're in a good space there. Awesome. And I feel, feel comfortable. All right, before we wind up, how about our good friend Charlie Perino and the Charlie's great. Charlie's a guy we got to get to. you got to get to meet yeah, Charlie. Yeah, he's terrific. Well, you know, folks, if you want to have an absolute blast at obtaining some great modern and vintage cards, you got to check out JRI cards. Our paisan, that means friend in Italian, right? That's what it means. Uh, Charlie the Ripper Perino. Mm-hmm. Yep. Along with Money Marco. Money what Marco's his son. He's it's... great. Uh, and the JRI gang give you the chance to participate, opening and unopened and sealed fresh wax. Don't look at me. Wax or cello. Cello. cello pack. Cello pack of your favorite sport. Who knows? You may wind up with a mantle, a Williams, a Trout, a Brady, or even... A judge. You know, that used to say Petroselli. Then you no, made me yeah, take it right. out. Well, uh, it's easy. You buy in, Charlie opens the pack, and you win. It's that simple. As a matter of fact, if you pull that special jewel, the guys at GRI, JRI cards will even have it graded for you. Featured in the LA Times, ESPN, and USA Radio, JRI is the hottest card pulling show on the internet. Well, you read really well. Is. No, I just want to take my time. And let's not forget that JRI <laughs> donates a part of their proceeds to various charities. That's JRI Cards, the breaks show that everyone is talking about. They're always digging up cardboard treasures. For a great hobby experience, go to JRICards.com. Charlie's right near me in uh, Palm Beach, West Palm. We have a blast. We go out to lunch. We buy pizza. We have a lot of laughs. He's a funny, funny guy, and he does a great job. He's good. All right, good John, a wrap-up. The show is this coming weekend. Yes. New England Card Show, October 1st and 2nd, Saturday and Sunday, 9 to 5 on Saturday, 9 to 4 on Sunday. And don't miss primetime Saturday night at the Basketball Hall of Fame. Free admissions, 6 to 7 wow. in the Hall of Fame Theater. We'll have Hobby Talk, which will be IG Live across the country with the top vloggers on stage, hosted by Rob Gerard, the sports therapist, followed by the one-in-one, -one, the only card trade show in the industry at a Basketball Hall of Fame center court. So I'm looking forward to having a great weekend, and I appreciate all the help. No, the problem, What's the I website? Don't What's forget, the website? Rico's going to be there no. from 11. Rico, I'll give it a run down. Two? Here goes. Here's the Rico. Rico will be there yeah. on uh, Sunday from 12 to 2. His buddy Jim Longboard will be there from 11 to 1. Uh, representing the 1967 Red Sox. It's their 55th anniversary of that World Series. Longboard. Check that one out. Long Check that out. Longboard John, is 11 to 1. Wow. And, and, and Rico's coming behind him, uh, cleaning up between 12 say, and 2. Longboard, Mickey Mantle's last home run, Jim Longboard. That's Mickey right. Mickey Mantle's last out I caught. So Where's even, the ball? Even if you're a Yankee fan... Come on. Was it a soft liner, Rico? It was. was oh, it? it's a pop-up, like oh. nine miles. I was, like, getting dizzy. Took care of it. <laughs> well, Ellen idol. and I are going to stop by. We're oh, going to stop by and say great, hi. Great, yes. Uh, uh, one last plug, by the way. If you want to get a copy of the Diamondbacks Collection, 50 yeah. of the greatest cards in baseball collecting history, nice. go to Amazon or TomZappalaMedia.com. With that being said... John, thank hey, you yeah, so much. You're John. welcome. Had thank a blast. You, thank you guys. We'll really appreciate you. it. Jeez. Thank you very Have much. Have a great hey, week. Nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, it's all right. And to our viewers and listeners, happy collecting. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.